conversation. It's now also my great joy to introduce the president and CEO of the United States Capitol Historical Society, Jane Campbell, who will formally start today's program. Jane. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you very much for all you do uh, to bring these programs to life for our, the members and supporters of the United States Capitol Historical Society, uh, the organization chartered by Congress to tell the story of the Capitol and the people who work in it in a manner that inspires informed patriotism. We are grateful for the support that you all provide to us uh, because we are a nonprofit organization that depends on your contributions to bring things like this to, to light. So today, as we approach the 4th of July weekend and all the celebrations that come with it, um, this webinar is designed to look ahead to America 250, the multi-year effort that is already underway to plan the commemoration of our nation's upcoming semi-quincentennial in 2026. Uh, today, we have the honor to have with us the chair of the commission name, named the Honorable Rosie Rios. And the Honorable Rosie Rios was the 43rd treasurer of the United States. Um, and that is an enormous distinction. If you look carefully at your money from those years, she is the one who signed your money. Um, she was designated as chair taking this responsibility in just in July of 2022. Um, she is one appointed by Congress as six, one of 16 private citizens. Um, she cam, comes to us just having finished her term as a visiting scholar at the Radcliffe Institute for the Advanced Study at Harvard University. And she is probably most well known for her work at initiating and leading the efforts to place a portrait of a woman on the front of the United States currency for the first time in over a century. Upon her resignation in 2016, she received the Hamilton Award, the highest award bestowed by the United States Department of Treasury. She was the longest serving Senate confirmed Treasury official beginning with her time on the Treasury Federal Reserve transition team in November, 2008 at the height of the financial crisis. Rosie has given me the permission to call her by her first name during this conversation. And we will hear from her about why did she join America 250? What are her hopes and dreams and what is the plan? Um, and then we will engage in a conversation. Uh, just put your Q and A's in the, uh, speech bubbles, and I will field them to Rosie as we move forward. Take it away. Thank you, Rosie, for being with us. Thank you so much, Jane. And I want to thank you for not just this invitation, but all the work that you've done as well. I've been an admirer of yours for a while uh, in your public service, also with your uh, work in uh, women in public policy. So you're hitting all my uh, all my passions. And, and, and thank you again for allowing me to join you today. Uh, I, um, as you heard, I, I, uh, I'm kind of an accidental historian in terms of, of uh, what I would consider kind of my, my own kind of pursuit of what I call writing history, R-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. Um, so uh, you know, I, I now focus on a number of initiatives, but specifically uh, the, the physical recognition of historical American women. So being part of this commission and, and, and now as chair, uh, really has allowed me to kind of think about, uh, uh, again, not just the, the role that, that women have played in our history, but really uh, kind of our, our, our journey to, to get to 250 years. Uh, and then, of course, thinking about this as, as not just a way to recognize the past, but really inspire the future, and especially uh, for this next generation of leadership. Uh, so as was mentioned, yes, I am the chair of the United States Semiquisentennial Commission. This is the official nonpartisan uh, government body established by Congress, uh, known as America 250. Our role is to coordinate uh, uh, the observance and activities in commemoration of the 250th anniversary of our nation's founding. Uh, as a commission, we are committed to orchestrating the largest and most inclusive commemoration in our nation's history. Uh, we are doing this by engaging and mobilizing federal, state, territorial, tribal, 
and local entities to make the 250th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence a once in a generation experience for all Americans. Although I will say that I do remember the bicentennial like it was yesterday. So to have this as kind of a twice in a generation experience and certainly in my role as chair uh, makes this a really, uh, for me, a very kind of um, uh, significant uh, uh, milestone for me personally. And again, for this country. Uh, I was appointed uh, as chair a year ago by President Biden. And as was mentioned, I previously served as the treasurer of the United States under President Obama. Actually, uh, you heard that I started out as one of uh, two dozen finance professionals who were on the uh, Treasury Federal Reserve transition team at the height of the financial crisis. I was also part of the Treasury Federal Reserve transition team on behalf of President Biden in 2020 to 2021. And then of course, in my role as chair. So I consider this as kind of my fourth tour of duty, if you will, uh, which is someone who was kind of born and raised in the Bay Area before Silicon Valley was Silicon Valley. Again, I couldn't be more honored to serve in this capacity. Uh, so as chair, it is my privilege uh, to help lead the commission in our effort to reach out and engage Americans from every corner of our country, from sea to shining sea, to hear what America means to them and how they wanna honor this milestone so we can create a unique and dynamic portrait of our nation at 250 years. America's 250th anniversary belongs to all of us and everyone deserves to be a part of its commemoration. Our commission has been laser focused on ensuring our organization is nimble enough to scale and to partner with those that can help us reach all Americans. Since last year, our team has been leading research efforts, developing messaging and meeting with key stakeholders around the country to help ensure all Americans can see themselves in this journey to the semi-quincentennial. And today, we're just days away from the 4th of July, which will mark three years until the 250th anniversary of the United States. I'm excited to share with all of you that this is the 4th, of, that this 4th of July will also mark the launch of America's Invitation, the official start to the three-year count-up, as I like to call it, to 2026, and the largest public engagement effort to date. You may recall that when we were uh, looking at our currency redesign, that we also launched a public engagement effort in June of 2015, and I led that effort and that really informed me of how important it is to engage all Americans in these types of very significant historical milestones. But America's Invitation will be a multi-year national public awareness and engagement campaign to reach Americans from all walks of life in every corner of the country, ensuring this is the largest and most inclusive commemoration in our nation's history. It's an opportunity for every single American to share their story, their hopes, and their dreams for the future of our country. Together, these stories will help create a portrait of America at 250 years old. Over the next three years, we will encourage every American to pause and reflect on our nation's past, honor the contributions of Americans before them, and most importantly, envision the future we wanna create for the next generation and beyond. And yesterday, we announced publicly that we would be officially launching this effort in the heartland of America in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, at America's favorite pastime, a baseball game. As we kick off this effort at American Family Field next Tuesday at the Brewers versus Cubs game, we're pleased to have some amazing partners alongside us who will be integral in helping to ensure we reach all Americans. Nextdoor, an app dedicated to connecting neighborhoods and communities is our official community partner, along with the YWCA, the nation's oldest and largest women's organization. In addition, we will debut our America's Invitation launch video, an invitation to all Americans to share stories of their past along with their hopes and dreams for our future. We wanna use the launch of America's Invitation to lift up Americans' pride in their communities, culture, and experiences, whether from their neighborhoods, civic group, work, or family, to commemorate, capture, and pass down to future generations. To do that, we're calling on Americans from all walks of life, to share photos, videos, poems, essays, songs, and more about what this country means to them. What foods make them think of home and what aspects of their communities they most appreciate? And tell us what it means to be American. This content should represent what is unique about your community, every community, every neighborhood, and every person adds something to the fabric of America just as each submission will add to the portrait of our nation 
as we approach 250. These submissions may be showcased on America 250's website, on social media platforms, commemorative events, and more and, will and more, and will provide Americans with a unique opportunity to learn more about each other and preserve a snapshot of today's America for future generations. We're working diligently to engage Americans from sea to shining sea, and we certainly can't do it alone. We need your help. Organizations like yours are indispensable in ensuring the success of this monumental effort. We want to hear from all of you about what America means to you. I've already recorded my video, and even Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Speaker Kevin McCarthy have recorded theirs. So now it's your turn, and all it takes is a few minutes of your time. We want to know what's going on in your communities, and we want to help lift up and amplify the important work you're leading in in your own neighborhoods. After our question and answer period, we will take roughly 10 minutes to allow folks to record your own videos about what this country means to you. A member of our professional services team will walk you through on how to submit your own video and contribute to this portrait of America at 250. We know America means many things to many people. And through America's invitation, we will have an opportunity to showcase what makes our country and our communities unique and develop a commemoration for all Americans. With your invaluable help and support, we can ensure that every community is represented and honored in this commemoration a national moment that is truly by the people and for the people. I urge each and every one of you to embrace this opportunity to join us in shaping America's 250th anniversary. Together, let us create a commemoration that unites us all and lays the foundation for a brighter future. Thank you. Well, what a great charge, uh, Rosie. We really appreciate it. Now, we got a couple of questions coming in from our, uh, you know, our listening audience. But I have to tell you that Sam is a serious, serious Nationals fan. And so recognizing that you have a special relationship to bringing the Nationals to uh, Washington, D.C., and, and baseball is the American pastime. Look what you're going to, you're going to kick off America 250 at a game between the Brewers and the Cubs. So tell us what you did about the Nationals. Let's, let's get a little American story here. Well, you know, that's one of my favorite questions. So in my previous uh, life, uh, decades ago, I was the director of economic development and redevelopment for the city of Oakland. Uh, and in that capacity, I was also the lead staff member uh, in the Oakland A's retention strategy. And I was born and raised on the Oakland A's. And, and, uh, and it was very important to me to, to have, uh, uh, you know, as, as baseball played such a, an important role in my, in my childhood, uh, uh, I wanted, of course, to, to, to work on that effort for, for the city of Oakland and for the metropolitan area. Uh, and uh, when I uh, left Oakland in, uh, in 2003, uh, my my uh, city manager at the time, Robert Bob, ended up also leaving Oakland and going uh, to be the DC city administrator. And so he hired me as a consultant to uh, work on the recruitment of the Montreal Expos to become the DC Nationals. And that also included the redevelopment of the Anacostia waterfront. So yes, I mean, who would have known, of course, you know, that, that was again a while ago, but uh, just so you know, Jane, as part of that process, part of our due diligence, we actually were able to uh, tour a number of, of uh, downtowns and a number of, of ballparks. And of course, uh, you know, Jacobs Field remains Cleveland. one of my favorites. Absolutely. I did tour Cleveland. And, and, uh, uh, and so, uh, um, you know, I, I know what baseball means to a lot of people. And, and it is, you know, baseball, hot dogs and apple pie is, is part of what a lot of people uh, uh, think about when they think about, uh, you know, our Americans pastime. And so the thought of, of launching at a baseball game, uh, came to me, you know, last September in my very first meeting as chair. Uh, uh, and, uh, and it was the first time, you know, when, when I brought up the concept of America's invitation and, and how this could be, um, really, again, just a, an opportunity to really, um, bring kind of two things to our country. One is awareness. Um, you know, a lot of people don't even realize that this milestone is, is, is around the corner. That's one. And, and second kind of action. 
and 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 so how can you be part of this how can your voice play a role in how this commemoration is going to be formed and so uh it immediately of course dawned on me that in order to really kind of touch people in a way that really resonates that we that we reach out and think about this as you know something that 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 is meaningful and so it's not just um you know it's not just about about uh uh this one and done but really understanding what's at the core of this of this effort um and what what again what when we think about what america means to you in my opinion you know sports plays such a, a very big role um so it was clear to me that that certainly baseball is going to play a big role and, and 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 it was intentional that we are doing this in in middle america uh that we're doing this in wisconsin that we're doing this as a grassroots effort that we're doing this uh you know at american family field uh, I mean, how how perfect does all this come together? And and to know that we're doing this as a community effort with our community partners of Nextdoor and YWCA, uh, I don't think it could be um, a, a more appropriate venue and opportunity than what we're doing now. And and it was actually in September, uh, the first time that we as a commission uh, unanimously agreed on a path forward. So uh, I think we're, we're we're doing this the right way. I think we are focused on Main Street, which is what this should be. And um, and I'd love to see where this journey goes. This isn't a one and done. This is just the beginning of a process. Well, that's great. We've got a couple people who've asked questions about um, how can they, as you know, local nonprofits, one. Uh, somebody from the Lincoln Group of DC, one somebody from a veterans organization in Idaho, like how can those organizations become part of uh, America 250? Yeah, so that's a fabulous question. And again, we see ourselves as really kind of the federation. We are not the only voice here. I mean, there, there have been federal agencies that have been planning this for, for 47 years already. Uh, and so when you, when, when, uh, you know, when you think about you know, whether you're a federal agency, whether you're a nonprofit, whether you're an academic institution or historical society, all constructive voices are welcome. And so we have established a very robust infrastructure and, and certainly through our website, America250.org, people can learn a lot more about their submissions. People can learn a lot more about how they can be engaged. And again, all these voices are welcome. We are, are very much um, organized in kind of three different areas. Uh, which is basically what we can elevate, and so whether you're a um, uh, whether you're a um, uh, again any type of institution that's been working on something you know with or without us. So if you're PBS and you're working on the American Revolution series by Ken Burns, you know we're more than happy, of course, to amplify that. And the second bucket is what I call you know where we can partner. So I'm making this up, but if you're Starbucks, you might wake up tomorrow and say, you know what, starting next year, Starbucks is gonna put uh, the America 250 logo on all our coffee cups, that's a partnership. And then the, the third bucket is what I call what we manage. So if you look back at the bicentennial, you know, the, 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 the national signature programs that were managed, um, you know, like the tall ships or the freedom train, uh, you know, that is something of course that, that, that we are, um, working on, of course, with the American public. And so as those ideas come forward, uh, we will uh, put together what we're gonna call our playbook. But in the meantime, all these ideas from everyone are absolutely welcomed. And, and I would say the first start is really, again, working through our, our website, America250.org, making sure people have some background information. And again, making sure that people access those portals of, of, of highlighting what they'd like to do and how they'd like to, to work with us or what they want to elevate with us that we can um, that we can do with them. Well, and we can send to everybody because we're getting some questions about follow up and uh, we will we always send a follow up saying the video of the session is available and you can, you know, tune in, you can share it. We will also include the America 250 website and and how people can share their stories, get engaged. Um, of course, one of the questions people are asking about is, how are you working with schools? Um, seems so important to reach out to the next generation. Absolutely. Uh, and, 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 you know, the Department of Education is also an ex officio member of our commission. 
Uh, and, and, and for me, I mean, for anyone who knows me also as an accidental historian, accidental feminist, accidental educator, um, schools are my target audience in everything that I do. Um, every time I take a trip, I always try to include a school into my activities uh, so I can, again, engage this next generation of leadership. We are absolutely making sure that education is, a, is one of our main pillars of what we're trying to do. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about us uh, dictating curriculum. That's up to the states. But absolutely, we are considering many initiatives that, that engage schools directly. Um, uh, lots of ideas that are formulating. It could be something, uh, for example, again, this is, these are just ideas that we've been, that we've been uh, throwing around that, again, we want to make sure that we, that we test and make sure we're approaching in the right way. Uh, but, but something, for example, one of my fun little ideas that came to me in my sleep is something that I call America's Field Trip. This is basically asking middle school kids you know, uh, two questions. What does it mean to be American and, and how should we be celebrating this commemoration? Uh, and so whether it's a video, an essay, um, uh, uh, some type of other type of, you know, a performance piece, whatever it is that resonates with them, you know, how can we think about honoring uh, those students who are selected and highlighted? And we can, obviously we can still do it now, even through our, our, our portals, our social media portals, our, 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 our website. Uh, but we're thinking about something a little bit more formal and something that that where the state commissions will also be involved. Maybe they'll be helpful in, in identifying and selecting what I'll call the winners. But again, that's still being formulated. Uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us and, and we don't want to do this alone. We want to make sure that whatever we propose is going to be uh, well-researched, well-informed and, and something that that's a that's a little for everyone. So, uh, but, but believe me when I say, no one is more focused on, on students and their engagement than I am. And, you know, let, let's, you talked about having a vivid memory of the bicentennial. And can you share with our listeners, what is that memory? What do you remember? And, and, and how does that memory inform what you wanna do for this next adventure? Yeah, I, you know, I, I remember the bicentennial like it was yesterday. I mean, I was 11 years old, uh, but obviously, you know, for a lot of kids, that's, you know, that's um, is that fifth grade. I mean, that, that, that's, uh, that, that's a very significant turning point for a lot of kids. And, and uh, look, my parents came here to the U.S. in 1958 from Mexico to Hayward, California, where I was born and raised. And the reason why my parents came to Hayward is because my dad was a seasonal worker at the Hunt's Tomato Factory in Hayward. And so, you know, they, they, they are the, the epitome of, of the American dream in terms of wanting to come to this country to make a better life. And so, um, you know, my mom, who eventually uh, raised all nine of my siblings as a single parent, uh, the one thing that she always emphasized was a quality education. And thankfully, with, with the help of our, of, our, of our Catholic parish, we all um, received a fabulous education. Uh, but that time in my life of, of being an 11 year old, um, and, and, and having the opportunity to go see the freedom train, uh, in Oakland as a field trip, um, you know, we would never have been able to go to DC during that time, but to have kind of the national treasures come to us, of course, I remember that. And, and, you know, I remember seeing on our black and white TV, the, 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 the pictures in my mind of the tall ships coming through, uh, the New York and Boston harbors. Um, and I still have my bicentennial quarter, by the way, I still have that. You know, for me, 25 cents back then was a lot of money, and 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 but it's more again what it what it symbolized for me. But but I think the 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 most personal moment was certainly on July 4th uh, in 1976. I do remember it was a cloudy night, but never have the fireworks uh, looked brighter than that evening. Um, and and I I was I was then and probably still am the 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 strongest patriot out there. Uh, I love this country, and 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 you know people ask me how do you know if you're gonna be successful in this effort with the 250th. And my answer remains the same. I want as many Americans as possible to feel like this is the land of opportunity all over again. And, and, and I'm not shy to say this is absolutely not about me, but absolutely it is about my kids. I want my 27 year old son and my 22 year old daughter to felt exactly what I felt on July 4th, 1976. I'm not quite sure that that's what this gen next generation feels. Um, so when you think about all those people who are still risking their lives, like my parents, to come to this country, when you think about all those people 
who, you know, I just spoke at the Global Business Summit in India, in New Delhi. You know, there's 4 million Indian Americans here in the US. And, and, and the, I would say the, the big theme that I heard when I was there is how many people still want to come to this country. Um, and, and so there's a reason for that. You know, again, we are not perfect. This country's history is not perfect by far. It's very complicated and very challenging, but we are still the oldest democracy in the world. And, and we can absolutely become more perfect. And again, I don't see this as an event. I don't see this as anything more than a journey, a journey to, to evolve, a journey to have voices included in this narrative that perhaps have never been heard before. Uh, and the stories, really the stories like mine, I'm sure are not unique. And, and how many other unwritten stories are out there, right? Usually in history, he who holds the pen makes history. Well, this time we all hold the pen. And we all have that opportunity to share. Um, and, 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 and most importantly, this is as much about the future as it is the past. So when you think about um, you know, what I call inspirations for aspirations, using history to inspire the future, you know, to involve technology in this is gonna be a big part of this, to involve again, those hopes and dreams and aspirations. Because when you visualize something, when you feel something, it becomes more real and it becomes more attainable. And that's what we want this to be. This isn't an event. It absolutely is a feeling, but it's an actionable feeling. And as much action that we can inspire out of this, I mean, that is the ultimate goal. Well, and one thing I might, you know, say just for our, our listeners is that we do maintain a virtual resource hub for resources for teachers who are trying to teach civics and the Constitution. And we will be adding, as America 250 and other partners um, identify teaching resources about 250, those will be added to our hub. And so around the country can put, the, put their favorite lesson plans up that are there and create a shared experience. So that is something that we will again, you know, put in the follow-up in case you haven't, if you haven't gone to the hub, the one thing that our education specialist has just added uh, is a set of resources for first year teachers who are trying to, struggling to teach the constitution. Um, and so he, he comes to us as a former teacher himself. And he said, you know, when I was first year, if there was, if, if there was one place I could go to get these things together, it would mean a lot. And so what, by having a, our issues in one place, that you know gives people an opportunity to go a variety of different avenues, whether it's to look at what their own state was doing or their territory or their local community. Um, it can all be you know started with the digital resource hub. So one of the questions that uh, our folks have is, how does America 250 relate to the state or local uh, commissions that are beginning to be developed? It's a fabulous question. So we are encouraging, of course, all commissions and the, the district and the territories to also uh, form their own commissions. And every state is different. Uh, I think we're up to 33 states who have formed uh, state commissions already, uh, whether it's the governor uh, uh, by executive order, whether it's by legislation. Again, every state needs to create as they say, as they see fit. Uh, and again, we, we, we're the federation here. So, so we aren't certainly gonna direct the states had to tell their own stories. We want the states to tell their stories, but we will be the convener. We will be kind of the, the, clear, the, the clearinghouse, if you will, of kind of what could be, maybe it's an interactive map. We're still formulating that technology as we speak, but we wanna have the ability to, you know, not just the states, but as I mentioned, all the federal agencies uh, to be able to share what they're, what, what they're planning. I mean, people wouldn't realize, for example, like the National Archives actually has, I think over 40 physical entities around the country. And of course, if you're the National Park Service, you are touching every part of this country. And so to be able to, to you know, in a, in, a, in a perfect world, to be able to have this map where you can point to uh, Cleveland and you'll know what's happening in Cleveland, you know, for the month of July, 2024 whatever it is, you know, and hopefully we can do that uh, for cities as well. Uh, but, but having that, that, that ability to kind of coalesce, again, to be that federation, to, 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 to convene um, all these stakeholders. And that is our goal, obviously, is we will have 
uh, we'll have those convenings. We will include not just the state commissions, but the federal agencies, the historical societies, the academic institutions, the nonprofits, all who want to play a significant role in sharing information. Hopefully, you know, again, getting to that point, we can share this technology across the board and, and really make this again as, as, as grassroots as possible. Um, you know, one thing we are working on as well is, is um, the legislation only called for uh, 12 of the federal agencies to participate in our planning efforts. For some strange reason, it didn't include, you know, my home of, of treasury uh, or, or commerce or even NASA. And of course, they've been planning these, uh, their own activities for also, you know, for years. So we want to make sure that all agencies know that this is an open door. We want to make sure that all cities know that this is an open door. We'll be working strongly with the U.S. Conference of Mayors, with the National Governors Association. I mean, we have our work cut out for us. And, you know, I keep going back to we can't do this alone. The relationships that organizations like yours has are, are very wide and deep. And we are going to rely on those relationships to help us, again, not just get the word out, but actually get to some very substantive uh, projects, programs, exhibits, experiences, yes, events, uh, you know, but also, again, this educational component that is obviously going to be uh, living and breathing every day. It's not just a one and done. It's really, again, you know, how to educate people about the, the narrative of what happened even leading up to uh, 70, 1776 and even what happened after that. Uh, so, again, our, our, our goal is to make sure that, 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 that this is um, evolving that this maybe even is, is evergreen if we do this right. And so, you know, we have the, the World Cup also happening in 2026 here in North America. What a great opportunity to make this a global platform. In addition, you probably know that, that we um, uh, are hosting, the, the US is hosting the Olympics in 2028. So again, whether it's this global platform of unity or whether these things that resonate as part of the semi-quincentennial continue on into uh, the Olympics, I mean, what, what, how wonderful would that be to make this uh, again, kind of a, an opportunity for growth, an opportunity to evolve and an opportunity to keep these voices alive. And I mean, this may be a, a challenging question, but you know, for Native Americans, they have a different perspective about the se semi-sesquicentennial uh, since, I can't even pronounce it. I have to learn to do my, <laughs> my goal is to semi quince. Semi quincentennial. I will I will learn that before before two fifty. <laughs> um, but uh, you know that their experience is different. And how are you going to commemorate that experience? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I probably should have started by saying that. Look, I mean, you know, from from. Uh, from their perspective, um, you know, we go back 15,000 years. I mean, it, this is definitely a, a very, um, um, a very important and significant um, uh, stakeholder community for us. We have dedicated staff specifically to our tribal partnerships. Um, and, and, and the Department of the Interior is actually our sponsoring organization. And of course, Secretary Helen, uh, the first indigenous uh, secretary in that position uh, has been a, a, a champion of our efforts. And so we wanna make sure that, that we reflect again, all voices, um, all narratives and, and, and honor and respect uh, the history that, that came long before us. I mean, the way I think about this, uh, you know, we are a nation of nations. Uh, this is our adopted country. And if you look back at, at 1776, you know, uh, uh, Alaska was Russia. Uh, my home state of, of California, where I am now, was Mexico. And that indigenous blood uh, is very similar. Um, you know, Louisiana, of course, and the whole Louisiana Purchase Territory uh, was, you know, France and Spain and, and others. And so, you know, even Texas had six flags flying over it at, at, at any point in time. So, so this nation of nations concept is an important theme for us. Um, and the respect of what it means to be in an adopted country. You know, this could very well be the first time that this country has ever had these types of conversations. And, and, and you know, the way I also think about it, we have always as a nation aspired to be a melting pot, but, but did we? Did we become a melting pot? Or are we just kind of these, you know, silos of little Italy's and Chinatowns? And so if we still truly wanna be that melting pot, the melting pot 
isn't just geographic. It's it it goes by time periods. It goes by again that how our country has evolved into these states and territories. You know, Puerto Rico is a territory. Guam is a territory, and 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 they're they're U.S. citizens. And and how do we uh, invite them? to also tell their own stories. Um, so, so, you know, I see this as very, very complicated and challenging, no doubt, absolutely. Um, but that is again, the history of our country. And, and, and I don't think that's gonna go away. I think those challenges are gonna continue for a while in terms of, of making sure that all constructive voices are included. But more than anything, I see it as an opportunity. It's an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity to evolve and it's an opportunity to be inclusive of all those narratives. I mean, we, you know, people call us nonpartisan. I, I say we're all partisan. We're bipartisan. We're every partisan, even beyond pol political affiliation. And we have to be. We absolutely have to be. Um, so it is uh, it is going to be difficult. I know that already. It's already been difficult, but it's worth the journey. Absolutely. It's worth it. Well, now you're talking about, you know, multi-partisan and you've mentioned the World Cup. You've mentioned the Olympics. We started with baseball. Somebody wrote in and said, now, what are you going to do with football? Because that is also an American pastime and the football fans do not want to be left out. So have you given any thought to, Come on. You're you know, preaching to the talk. choir here. Let me just start. <laughs> Let me just start right there by saying, you may have heard that in 2026, the Super Bowl is gonna be held in San Francisco again, the San Francisco Bay Area. So yes, football is front of mind. And you know, I also wanna uh, share something that is also very personal to me, which is um, you may have heard of the American Women on Quarter Series. Uh, that, uh, uh, that took me five years to pass that legislation. That was something near and dear to my heart for a while that actually started when I was treasurer of the United States. And that American Women on Quarter Series has expanded in the years that I've been tackling this. Uh, so you might have heard the, the first quarter that was issued last year in January of 2022 was Maya Angelou. Uh, Maya Angelou is the first time in US history that we've ever had a, uh, uh, an African-American on our coin or currency. Uh, but that legislation is a 10-year program. So it's, it's um, four years of women on quarters, five quarters per year. So five women, 20, 20 women total will be honored. It also includes one year of uh, uh, dedicated to the semi-quincentennial where not just quarters, but all circulating coins can be redesigned to honor the semi-quincentennial. Um, and then the next part of it is four years of youth sports and youth sports, uh, was a very important part of this legislation because, um, again, I want this to be about kids. I want this to be about them thinking about their future. And, and when you think about, you know, what do kids collect these days? I mean, I collected, you know, rocks. I think people collected coins, stamps, baseball cards, of course. But maybe today, I don't know, they collect what, likes, followers, maybe video games. So having that tactility to me is very important. And being able to find your sport, whether it is baseball, basketball, yes, football, you know, that's going to be kind of a fun kind of treasure hunt across the country starting in 2027. And this legislation culminates with giving the U.S. Mint the ability to produce the medals for the Olympics. So, yes, it was very deliberate, very deliberate on my part. And, and, and again, thankfully, with the help of Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman, who's on, on our commission, and, 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 and then Speaker Pelosi, you know, we got this legislation over the finish line. Um, uh, but yes, you know, I, no one was happier than I was when I literally emailed uh, Roger Goodell, Rob Manfred, and Adam Silver in one email. Who gets to have that opportunity to say, thank you, this is happening. We're doing this together. Isn't this wonderful? And of course, all three responded immediately. Um, with their, not just their congratulations, but how can we help? So yes, Roger Goodell is part of this. Absolutely, football is part of this. Basketball is part of this. Football is part of uh, uh, baseball. And of course, you know, soccer and whatever else that we can do uh, to make sure that, that, um, that all parts of the country are included in the separate. So go Niners. No, no, no. Let's don't get to, you know, I'm from Cleveland. 
you know, we, we, we are reliable for the Cleveland Browns, even yeah. though they have never been Super Bowl, even since the Super Bowl started. Um, but let me just uh, kind of quickly uh, with the, the quarters, uh, I was reminded by one of our attendees that Frederick Douglass uh, was the one who was chosen to be on the DC state quarter when DC got to choose. And he certainly has had a lot to say about the founding of this country, particularly the Declaration of Independence and his famous speech that he gave about what does the 4th of July mean uh, when the Declaration of Independence has not been everything it was intended to be for people of color. Um, and so one of the queries is, as you look at America and, you know, we're a salad bowl uh, of a fruit salad, you know, where we want everyone to maintain their own identity, but still be part of a, a package that, that really creates what is real Americans. How are you trying to balance those issues? Yeah, you know that that's a that's a, a really great question, and 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 balance. When I think about balance, I think about um, you know equitable voices, right? So people having the opportunity to share their perspectives. I mean, yes, I mean this country was founded on the backs of many people and at the expense of many people. Um, you know, and again, as I sit here in what used to be Mexico in California, you know, you you tell me who came here first. So, so you know, these these are these are challenging. These are absolutely challenging issues that, and again, we as a country probably have never had those conversations before. So, you know, I can't dictate what people are going to say. I think what we can do, though, is provide those platforms for those constructive conversations. We know we can't be all things to all people, but we can provide those opportunities to have these voices heard. And I think that's the best we're going to be able to accomplish. And look, I mean. You know, I'm a numbers person and this country is changing whether we like it or not. And you look at our demographics and, you know, one of the, the uh, what, I, what I think about when I think about, you know, race or ethnicity and how our country has changed so much and how, you know, this great state of California that I was born and raised in is, you know, majority minority, you know, welcome to the future. I'll never forget my, my, my son um, and uh, uh, his college essay. And, and he called it a tale of two grandmas. And he starts out his essay by saying, I am Joey. And he goes on in this essay and talks about his grandmother from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, and his grandmother from Hokkaido, Japan. He never once talked about their differences, but how they both raised them with common values of family, food, faith, and unconditional love. And he ended his essay by saying, I am Joey. He's not one or the other. He is that fruit salad that you mentioned, that salad bowl. He is all of it. And he doesn't want to be known as one versus the other. He's a person first. And here's what makes up who he is as a person. Are those values of family, food, faith, and unconditional love. And everyone should have that opportunity to describe their own narrative, their own story, how they want to be viewed. And some people want to be viewed in certain ways and some people don't. And that is a personal choice. And again, our goal is to amplify those voices, including Joey's. Oh, and my yeah. daughter, Brooke, I can't, of course, I'll always bring her up. We must not forget Brooke. Um, but, <laughs> and, Queen you know, Castle. Just, as we move to the next section, don't forget Brooke. We also want to say with the coins, don't forget the women's NBA uh, and women's Absolutely. soccer. So that we, we get you know, on Brooke's behalf. Um, <laughs> but, you know, as you tell Joy's, Joey's story, one of the things that we want to do for our folks is thank you so much, Rosie, for your time, your attention today, but more importantly, for your leadership with America 250 and the fact that what you have brought to us is a very inclusive vision. And you can know that the Capital Historical Society will be standing with you as we move forward and we look forward to being partners. Thank you. And so my understanding is the next step of this is that Mary Collins Atkinson, who works with you, um, is going to explain how our listeners, viewers can tell their stories 
And just so people don't write and freak out and say, I can't remember all this stuff. We will, in the follow-up note, we'll have all the links, but Mary, Mary Collins will give us the framework. Mary Collins, take it away. Great. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Mary Collins Augustin. Um, Like Jane said, I work alongside um, Rosie and I guess in an effort to make sure that we can reach everybody. Um, I'd really like to show you all the way that our website functions. Um, and so I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Um, um, you know, I don't think it's going to let me. Let's see. Okay. I am not able um, to share my screen, but what I am going to do, and you won't need to see my screen to do this, is drop our link in the chat um, and I'll kind of walk you through um, the process to record a video um, or to, you know, not specifically videos. We also take in text, we take in poems, we take in um, stories and pictures and all sorts of things to commemorate, you know, your history, which is a part of our, our country's history. Um, so at the link right here, um, I think Sam is going to share his screen for us. Um, That'll work. Perfect. Uh, thanks, Sam. I appreciate that. Um, so if you go to our website, which Sam has gracious, graciously shared with us, um, you're brought to this page. And this is kind of our benchmark. It um, counts down the years and the months and the days until um, we hit that 250th anniversary. But at the top, um, you'll see a bar and um, you can click on America's Invitation. Um, and so you're brought to this page that says One Nation, Many Stories. Um, and as you scroll down, um, there is an opportunity to share your story. So if you click that link, um, you're brought to this next page with a video um, oh, right here on the right side. Um, so if you click this video, it's Rosie's submission. Um, so you can view her um, her video and she kind of walks through what America's Invitation is and what it means to her. Um, and as you click that video, you'll then be prompted um, to record your own. So Sam, if you wanna go ahead and click on that. And if you give it just a moment. United States and Chair of America 250. As we approach America's 250th anniversary, here at America 250, we wanna hear from you. This is a chance for Americans so the, from all walks of life. Sam, if you want to hit share their pause for just a second. Um, at this point, you'll be prompted with um, either video, audio, or text submission. And you can click on any of these options to record your video, to upload um, an audio file, or to submit text. Um, so if everybody would like to participate, um, you can click on any of those links. Uh, and we'll give you a few minutes to go ahead and record um, or submit your text. Um, and that's it. So this is how we'll collect submissions from everyone um, across the nation of every age, from every background, um, in all parts of the country. And as we kind of garner these submissions, then we'll share them across um, our social media channels. So this will be an ongoing effort for the next couple of years. Um, it's, I see Renee Lafayette has posted in the, in the chat that she'll be sharing this with her students, which is an awesome opportunity. Um, we'd encourage any of you, if you have students of your own, if you're a teacher, um, this is a great project for really any grade, um, I think. And it, it, we would love to have their submissions and to help share um, kind of across our pages as we highlight you know, what America means to everyone. Um, so at the end of this initiative, our, our goal is to have kind of a tapestry of um, America and what it means to everyone, um, not just you know someone here or someone there, but uh, kind of collectively, we get back to that salad bowl um, metaphor that we were talking about earlier, where we have all of these different pieces that just come together beautifully. That's great, Mary Collins. Mary Collins, Rosie, uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is really uh, given, given people a, very direct way to get engaged. Um, and we will continue this conversation. 
uh, we will put this in the follow-up and, and we'll share with you the kind of feedback we get about people that are using it. Uh, we'll, we'll, put it we'll also put it on our hub, um, our digital resource hub for teachers um, and suggest that it might be something that teachers could use as a, as a way for uh, students to tell their stories. So if you have, you know, as it comes together, if it gets to the point where you're ready to announce Here's the latest and greatest in uh, the events that are going to happen across the country um, and how people can access, let us know, and we can we can do an updated webinar, we can share that share it through our newsletter and use whatever resources we have to tell the story about celebrating uh, America's semi quincentennial. Is that right? Yes. Okay, I keep using that word, you know, everybody gets a new word once a day. And so I want to, as we close, once again, thank the members and supporters of the United States Historical Society. We always call this our NPR moment. Uh, we can only do this because of your support. Uh, so thank you for sending those uh, sending us your time and your talent um, and your treasures, because all of this is not free, but it is part of telling our story of freedom. And we appreciate your investment and your engagement. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sam, for the work you do to make this possible. Have a great day. Happy Fourth of July. Bye.